Dear students, in the previous session, we have briefly described about the mechanisms of evolution and hardy van work principle. In this session, we will briefly describe the evolution and origin of man, that is, evolution of human being. About 2000 million years ago, the four cellular forms of life appeared on earth. The mechanism of how non-cellular aggregates of giant macromolecules could evolve into cells with membranous envelope is not known. Some of these cells had the ability to release oxygen. The reaction could have been similar to the light reaction in the photosynthesis, where water is split with the help of solar energy captured and channelized by appropriate light harvesting pigments. Slowly, single cell organisms become multicellular life forms. By the time 500 million years ago, invertebrates were formed and active. Jaw as fish probably evolved around 350 million years ago. Sea weeds and few plants existed probably around 320 million years ago. We are told that the first organisms that invaded land were plants. They were widespread on land when animals invaded land. Fish with stout and strong fins could move on land and go back to water. This was about 350 million years ago. In 1938, a fish caught in South Africa happened to be a coelacanth, which thought to be extinct. These animals called law fins evolved into the first amphibians that lived on both land and water. There are no specimens of these left with us. However, these were ancestors of modern day frogs and salamanders. The amphibians evolved into reptiles. They lack thick shelled eggs which do not dry up in sun unlike those of amphibians. Again, we only see their modern day descents, the turtiles, tortoise and crocodiles. In the next 200 million years or so, reptiles of different shapes and sizes dominated the earth. Giant ferns, the pteridophytes, were present, what they all fell to form coal deposits slowly. Some of these land reptiles went back into the water to evolve into fish-like reptiles probably 200 million years ago, for example, ichthyosaurs. The land reptiles were of course the dinosaurs, the biggest of them, that is Trinosaurus rex, was about 20 feet in height and had huge fearsome dagger-like teeth. About 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs suddenly disappeared from the earth. We do not know the true reason. Some say climatic changes killed them. Some say most of them evolved into words. The truth may live in between. Small such reptiles of that era still exist today. The first mammals were like shrews. Their fossils are small sized. Mammals were viviparous and protected by their unworn junk inside a mother's body. Mammals were more intelligent in sensing and avoiding danger at least. When reptiles come down, mammals took over this earth. There were in South America mammals resembling horse, hippopotamus, weirs, rabbit, etc. Due to some continental drift, paused mammals of Australia survived because of lack of competition from any other mammal. Lest we forget, some mammals live wholly in water. Whales, dolphins, seals and sea cows are some examples. Evolution of horse, elephant, dog, etc. are special stories of evolution. You will learn about these in higher classes. The most successful story is evolution of man with language skills and self-consciousness. A rough sketch of the evolution of life forms, their times on geological scales are indicated here. Now, we will discuss origin and evolution of man. About 15 million years ago, primates called Dripithecus and Ramapithecus were existing. They were hairy and vague, 
like gorillas and chimpanzees. Ramapithecus was more man-like while Dryopithecus was more ape-like. Few fossils of man-like bones have been discovered in Ethiopia and Tanzania. These revealed hominid features leading to belief that about 3 to 4 million years ago man-like primates walked in Eastern Africa. They were probably not taller than 4 feet what walked up right 2 million years ago. Australopithecines probably lived in East African grasslands. Evidence shows they hunted with stone weapons what essentially ate fruits. Some of the wounds among the wounds discovered were different. This creature was called the first human-like being, the hominid, and was called Homo habilis. The brain capacities were between 650 to 800 cubic centimeters. They probably did not eat meat. Fossil discovered in Java in 1891 revealed the next stage, that is Homo erectus, about 1.5 million years ago. Homo erectus had a large brain around 1900 cc. Homo erectus probably ate meat. The Neanderthal man with a brain size of 1400 cc lived in near East and Central Asia between 1 lakh to 40,000 years back. They used hide to protect their body and buried their dead. Homo sapiens arose in Africa and moved across continents. What? develop into distinct races. During ice age between 70,000 to 10,000 years ago, modern Homo sapiens arose. Prehistoric cave art developed about 1800,000 years ago. Agriculture came around 10,000 years back and human settlement started. The rest of what happened is part of human history of growth and decline of civilizations. So, we can conclude that the origin of life on earth can be understood only against the background of origin of universe, especially earth. Most scientists believe chemical evolution, that is formation of biomolecules preceded the appearance of the first cellular forms of life. The subsequent events as to what happened to the first form of life is a conjectured story based on Darwinian ideas of organic evolution by natural selection. Diversity of life forms on earth has been changing over millions of years. It is generally believed that variations in a population result in variable fitness. Other phenomena like habitat fragmentation and genetic drift may accentuate these variations leading to appearance of new species, hence evolution. Among the stories of evolution of individual species, the story of evolution of modern man is most interesting and appears to be parallel evolution of human brain and language. So my dear students, this is all about evolution of man, the evolution of human beings, that is evolution of ourselves with our descendants and the various factors supporting the evolution.